Hey, it's Jeff Douglas with Appearing Clouds, folks. I want to talk to you about a new tool I've been using lately for Force.com development. So, in addition to Force.com, I do a lot of other development in different languages, and one of the uh, tools I use is Sublime Text. It kind of replaces text made on Maps, Max. It's a basically a text editor, but you can use it for a ton of different purposes. And a lot of the cool kids nowadays are using TextMe or switch from TextMe to Sublime Text. So I've been using this recently for Force.com development with Joe Ferraro from Mavens. He developed a plugin for Sublime Text called Mavens Mate. He had a TextMate version, but this is kind of a, you know, more of a, this is actually a plugin for Sublime Text because, like I said, a lot of cool kids have switched to it. So you, you can, Joe's been doing a lot of work on this. It's not done, still pretty much a beta. I've been used it for a couple of months now, but it's got some really cool features, and I probably stopped using Force.com plugin with Eclipse for the past two months and very rarely use it nowadays. So kind of want to walk you through what we're doing here. He's done a lot of updates. Things have been going really well. A lot of new features have been added on to it. And uh, it's not done, he'll tell you that, but there's a lot of cool things we do. So, so what does it do? It's actually, you can actually create and edit Salesforce projects. It hooks into SVN and Git. You can compile classes. You can create new um, assets in there. You can actually run test codes in there. And you can deploy um, metadata. And you can execute anonymous from all within, within the, the plugin. So it looks just like, um, TextMate, I'm sorry, it looks just like Sublime Text 2, but it's much easier to install. So you'll see the installation is pretty simple. It runs all on Ruby, so you've got to have Ruby installed. You just do gem install Mavens of Me, and then you curl this URL here. And that's going to install everything in there for you. And then it just sets up as another fit, um, folder or another menu inside of, of, of Sublime Text 2. There is a little bit of tweaking you have to do for your preferences, so where you want all your products to be created at. You have to set that up in a text file. It's real easy in the user settings. And then if you are using RVM for Ruby, which is the Ruby version manager, you do a little tweak so that way it'll run under the version of Ruby that you're currently using for RVM. So like I say, it's making a ton of changes. They're fast and furious. So to run the updates, really simple. Just curl this URL and does all the installation for you. Really simple to do. Uh, he's probably put out two or three updates in the past month or so. It's a lot of cool stuff. So. Once you get installed, it looks like this. So here's tech. Here's um, <laughs> here's Sublime Text 2. It's another menu up the top here, and you can have a project, the metadata. You can run your Apex tests all all through here, all through this menu. Um, you can right click on some things too, and then you can hit the the um, hit Control Shift P to get the palette here, and you can run the commands here. So we'll go ahead and check out a project, and it takes a minute. It's going to fire up Ruby, and it's going to launch this app in the background, and it's going to come up as another menu command, another window for you. So you just, just like Eclipse, so you go ahead and enter the project name like you would in Eclipse, username and password, and then you would also, let me get my password off, off screen here, get my password in there, and then you're going to choose, you know, the URL, production or, or sandbox. And then if you want to actually use version control, you can hook it right up into version control too, through here. And then you can determine the metadata you want to, you want to use. So you can say, I want to pull down these by default, it grabs the same ones that force.com gets, but you can, of course, choose anything else you want. You can drill into this and get the metadata you want. Then when you hit create project, it's going to go ahead and pull out all your files for you locally, just like force.com IDE does, so that you can edit them. So let me pause that. All right, so I did that. Took a little bit of time here. So the cool thing about it is now you got all the really kick butt features you have in Sublime Text too. So let me expand this a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and find a file here to look at. Okay. So now you can go through here and look at different files and it gives you all the cool tools that you normally get. You can find things really quickly. It'll pull up the file features for you. You can run a find across all the different files. And one thing great about Sublime Text 2 is that it's super fast. Um, it's much faster than you would run in force.com IDE. So that's one of the cool things a lot of people like about it. And it's also it's extensible. You can add your own plugins to here. So. You can also create, well, I like to create a gist through here. You can create gist, you can pull gist down for code snippets. That's one of the cool things I like about here too. You can easily just say, here's a, a gist, snippet of code, that's a gist, I want to go ahead and grab it and add it. So you can do two things here. You've got a new project and a checkout project. New project basically creates a project, adds it to um, Salesforce, maybe connects it to SVN or Git. Checkout project just pulls it down for you automatically. That's the big thing for you. So you can hook it up into Git right away. So let's go ahead and grab some stuff here. This is if you want to edit a project. So it kind of grabs the same thing you have in sales in the IDE for Salesforce. It's going to allow you to change the metadata, pull down new metadata down here, change the password, 
all that same function that you would get. So it's supposed to be a replacement for the force.com IDE, and it's getting there, but it's not quite there yet. But I love it. I've been using it extensively. So same thing, you can drill in here and get you know different objects, field level stuff. You can also go here and you can actually create, um, you can clean a project. So that'll essentially wipe out all your local files and pull everything down from, from the server and grab that for you. And then you can compile. That'll compile all of the classes in your org on the server. And then you can, of course, you know, create new things. You can create new Apex classes. This is really cool. So he's got a lot of templates you can use here. So you enter in the name of the class and what type of template. Um, he's got a whole bunch of them preloaded there for you already. So that's really simple to do there. You can also go up here again and you can say, I want to create a new trigger or a new Visual Force page or a new component. It's a little hard to see there. Sorry about that. Uh, one thing I like also is that you can come in here and let's see here let's go ahead and look at we can run tests in here which is probably the best thing I think you can do in here is running tests really really slick so it pulls up it, again fires up Ruby pulls up another page for you and shows you all your test classes you have in your org and you can go through here and you can actually choose the ones you want so I'll grab this one right here you can you know set your category set your log levels there just like can force.com IDE and then you hit run tests and of course it's gonna run those tests for you and bring back the results the cool thing about it is while you're waiting for tests run, you can play Pac-Man. That's the best thing about it here. I think I think Joe's kind of bored with running tests, so and that kind of gives you a nice little um, feedback of what was wrong with your test. You can go ahead and look at your class coverage, your warnings, your test coverage. So here's my class I just ran the test on. You can see the coverage on it here. Let me click this. It gives you a really nice display of your code and where you have missed the coverage at, which mine I always miss coverage. This is a developer org. And you can look at triggers, of course, and see the same thing for triggers here. Of course, I didn't run tests on any triggers, so a lot of them be done. Warnings, and then the log is really easy to see, too. You can go through here and look at all the, the output for the log and see what's going on here, too. So that's the test classes. Also, you can um, compile the active file. A lot of times, you know, you don't want to compile it every time you make a change to it, so it's really simple. You just hit that. It's going to compile the active file. And then from then on, once you actually save the file, let me make a little change. Hit save, it's going to compile it for you automatically. So that's kind of nice. Or if you want to, you can actually, I think you can do it from the menu up here also. You can do save, and it's going to compile it for you too. So that's pretty slick. Pretty fast. One thing I bought it is super, super fast. All right, so you can also refresh the file from the server. Same thing you do in Eclipse. And then you're going to grab that. So I'll refresh that from the server. It'll over any changes locally, of course and pull that down and then you can actually deploy to the server now this is actually works pretty well I've had some issues with it we have a, our CloudSparks org is really huge it takes like 10 or 15 minutes to run all the tests so it kind of times out and I've been working a little bit with Joe to, to work to get that solved but it still works so the cool thing about here is you can actually search for for classes you want to deploy based on a keyword search which is really nice because if you got a, like I said ton of files you know it's it's crazy to go through there and select all those files and then, of course, you'll see the results after you um, deploy the code. So this is kind of a screenshot of what I deployed it earlier where I had it fail on a test, give it an example. Um, you get a really nice feedback on you know what succeeded, what failed, and some of the, the details. So so that's that's probably the main overview on the, uh, the Maven's Mate plugin for Sublime Text 2. So hope you guys like it as much as I do. Drop Joe a line if you want to see any features in there. He's really fast to get back for changes, and there's a ton of new features coming out all the time. So, hope you enjoy it.